Now that your API is sending back authentication tokens when users sign up or log in, it's time to start talking about how those tokens are gonna be used to actually authenticate other requests. Now remember, every single request to the API is going to require authentication with the exception of sign up and log in. For everything else, the client is gonna need to provide that authentication token and the server is gonna validate it before performing whatever operation they're trying to do. Now, we're gonna knock this feature out in this video and in the next one, and where I'd like to start is talking about Express Middleware, which is gonna be at the core of allowing us to get all of this done. To get started, let's head over to Visual Studio Code and explore how Express Middleware is gonna fit into our application architecture. Now for this video, we'll be spending all of our time in index.js, and over here, I'm gonna start by pasting in a set of JavaScript comments, which are gonna serve as a little diagram illustrating what Express Middleware will allow us to do. So without Middleware, which is our current setup, we have the following situation. A new request comes into the server, and the first thing that runs is our route handler. This is the only thing we've set up to execute. So the new request comes in, Express maps it to the correct route, and that function gets executed. This is exactly what we've seen for the dozen or so requests we've created and run so far. Now with middleware, we can customize the behavior of the server to fit our needs. So in this case, we have something similar but slightly different. There's a step added in the middle. So we still have a new request coming into the Express server, but then we do something. Now, this something is nothing more than a function that runs, and we can set up this function to do whatever we'd like. Maybe we wanna log out some statistics about the request so we can keep track of it in our server logs, or maybe we wanna check if there's a valid authentication token. Now, once the middleware runs, we can continue to choose to run the regular route handler so the given operation is completed successfully. Now in here, we have a ton of control over what we do. We could allow the route handler to run. We could prevent it from running if the user isn't authenticated, as an example. So Express Middleware gives us a lot of fine grain control over how we can customize our app. Now, when we set up our middleware functions, we don't have to do it for every single route in the Express application. We can target individual ones, which is what we'll be doing with authentication, because remember, sign up and log in aren't gonna require authentication to work. Now let's actually write some code to register a middleware function of our own. We're gonna add this code right up here as one of the first things we do in the file. Make sure that what you're adding is above our other app.use calls, and I'll talk more about why that needs to be in a little bit. And right here, what are we gonna do? Well, to register a new middleware function to run, we use app.use, a method we've actually called before. Now, every time in the past when we've called app.use, we always provide something that was created by Express. We've never explicitly provided a function that we've defined, but that's exactly what we're gonna do right here. So let's go ahead and pass to use a single argument, a function. Now, this function is the function that's going to run between the request coming to the server and the route handler actually running. And it has access to the same information as the route handler right here, I get access to the request and the response along with one additional argument called next. Now, request and response, both of those contain the same information that we would have for our route handler. It is only next that's specific to registering middleware. To get started, let's go ahead and just use console.log to print something to the terminal. What I'm gonna do is print out the request method and the path. So was it a get, a post, a delete, and what was the path? Was it forward slash users or forward slash posts? So right here, we have access to all of that information on the request object. We have request.method, where we can get the HTTP method used, and we have request.path, where we can get that path. Now, for the moment, we're not gonna add anything else into the function, we're just gonna set it up with this one line, and we're gonna test it out by running a request from Postman. 
let's go ahead and run a request like the read users request right here. I'm going to go ahead and fire that off. And down below, what do we see? I see loading printing and it's never going to go away. It's going to run until eventually Postman just gives up. Now we can always cancel that in order to stop the request, but the question is, why is it always loading? Why doesn't ever it get the response that it's expecting, which would be the user's array? The reasoning has to do with the function that we've created. Your middleware function can do as much or as little as it needs to. It could be something as simple as logging out a message or something as complex as validating a token and making sure that user exists in the database. But it's your job to call next if the next thing in the chain should run. So down below, we have the new request and we have do something. If do something, our middleware function never calls next, the route handler is never going to run. If we do want the route handler to run, all we do is we call next right here. We don't have to provide any arguments to it. We just call it letting express know that we're done with this middleware function. So right here, we can add the call to next and test things out. We're not going to change anything else. All we've done is we've added that in. Over inside of Postman, what I'm going to do is fire that off one more time. And right here, we are indeed getting the same old response we were getting before we ever had that middleware function set up. Now, inside of Visual Studio Code, you'll notice that down in the terminal, we have get forward slash users showing up. So now we have the best of both worlds. We're able to log out what we wanted to log out, but in the end of the day, our request is still able to run, providing the user with the information that they requested. Now, it's possible that you don't always want to call next, and there's valid reasons to do that. Sometimes your middleware should stop the route handler from running, like it's going to do when we eventually set up authentication. For the moment, though, let's go ahead and work through a simpler example. We're going to say that if someone tries to use the get HTTP method, we go ahead and send back a message saying that they can't. But if they try to use post, patch, or delete, we'll allow it to work. So let's go ahead and see how we could set something like that up. Right here, we're going to wipe out our middleware function and we'll start with a little conditional logic if. Right here, we're going to run this code if it is indeed a get request. So for us, that would be looking at request.method and checking if it is equal to the string capital get. If it is, this code is going to run. If it's not, we could set up an else block that'll run instead. Now, if it is valid, if it's not get, we can go ahead and call next. That ensures that those route handlers will run. If it is get currently, it would just never respond and we would see that loading screen forever and that's not what we want either. If we're not going to call next from our middleware, it's a good idea to send back a response saying why, saying why things aren't working as expected. Right here, we can use response.send, which we've used plenty of times before, to say something like get requests are disabled. Now let's go ahead and save the program and test things out. If it's a get request, I would expect us to see this message. If it's anything else, I would expect it to work. Right here, I have read users. I'm going to go ahead and fire that off one more time. And what do I get? I get my get request message showing up. Now let's try a non get request like create user, which uses post. I'll fire that off and it does indeed work. Now, the user wasn't created because that email's already taken, but it did indeed at least run the route handler. So using just a little variation in our middleware, we can limit what a user has access to, and this is the exact same technique we'll use to enable authentication. Now, we'll get to that in the next video, but before we do, a quick challenge for you to set up some middleware on your own. Up above, I'm going to go ahead and comment out the middleware function we've already created, and it's going to be your job to create a middleware function for when your site is in maintenance mode. Right here, it's going to be your challenge to create middleware for a maintenance mode. So right here, what you're going to do is register a new middleware function, and you could do that right here below our previous one. And the job of this one is to disable every single request. 
No matter what someone makes a request to, you're going to send back a response with a maintenance message and a 503 status code, which means that the service is temporarily unavailable. Now for the actual message, you could say something like the site is under maintenance, please try back soon. This would be really useful if you were doing something like upgrading your database and you needed the service to shut down temporarily, though you would bring it back online shortly. So in this case, we don't want any of our request handler functions to ever run. We wanna send back that message for every single incoming request. Now, once you're done with that, go ahead and test things out. Make a couple of requests over in Postman and make sure you see the correct message and status code showing up. Take some time to knock that out, test your work, and when you're done, go ahead and click play. How'd that go? Let's go ahead and get started by calling app.use. So right here, we are going to register a brand new middleware function to run, and we know we get access to those three arguments. We have request and response and next. Now, I already know that I'm not gonna use next or response we don't have to name those, but it's common practice to always list out all three, just so you have them available and you remember what you have access to. Down below, in the function itself, we wanna send back our maintenance message with a 503 status code. So right here, let's go ahead and do just that. For that, I'll be using response.status to set the status code to a 503, then I'll go ahead and use send to send back the message. Site is currently down, check back soon, or any other message would get the job done. So we have the middleware intercepting the requests, we're sending back our maintenance response, and we're not calling next, which means that none of those route handlers will ever execute. The last step is to test things out. I'm going to try the requests from the server using Postman, and I'll make sure I get the correct response back. Right here, what I'm gonna do is remove the challenge comments. I'll also remove the little diagram we had down below. I'll save the file, then I'll test things from Postman. Over here, I have create user. I'll fire that off and we get our maintenance message and the status code, which is great and expected. And over here for another request like read users, I should see the same thing and I am. So using middleware, we can customize our server to fit our needs. Now currently, we're setting up middleware that runs for every single route handler. In the next video, as we actually set up the authentication middleware, we'll learn how we can set it up for specific requests. I'm excited to get to that, so let's jump right into the next one.